Hi all, in this video, we are going to learn about vector in C++. And the content of the video consists of what is a vector, insert the data, remove data of a vector, size of a vector, display the content, how do we return, um, how do we use vector as a parameter in function, and then how do we return a vector. And lastly, we will go for the conclusion part. So basically, when we want to use a vector, um, it is used as similar as array. Totally same as array, but the, there is a little bit difference, okay? When you want to store more than one values in any variables, then you can consider array or a vector. And the syntax for declarations for the vector is simple. We just have to include um, vector and then the data type of the vector. Probably it's integer or string or characters. And then we have to prepare a name or give a name and the size of the vector if you know the vector okay don't forget about the semicolon so for an example vector string when we declare data type string and this is the variable student's name and if you know the size or you want to initiate um, initialize the size of the vector then you can put a value nine okay so nine spaces will be insert in the vector as zero and vector integer, we also declare as integer, and then student's ID, semicolon, which means that actually we don't put any um, value in the vector itself. And this is another example. We declare as underscore ID as integer for vector, and we can insert the value. This is what we have predefined for that particular uh, variables, okay, vector variables. So again, the size is optional in a vector, Right. Um, in order to insert data in a vector, we always use dot pushback. Dot pushback follow with what are the values um, from the user or you preset it. For an example, we can set values. This is the variable name, dot push underscore back, and then this is the value, 32. And then values dot pushback, 21. So if you have three lines of this code for pushbacks, Push, push back, um, the computer will store 32, 21, and 10. So all of these variables will be stored in a box. You can have to, you have to imagine that there is a box. The first item is 32. The second item on top of 32 is 21. And then the third item of um, this variable is 10. So the locations will be 32, 21, and 10. Uh, which is almost... Uh, yeah, like this, okay? You have to imagine there is a box. The first value is 32, and then when you have the second code, which is 21, and the th third line of code, which is 10. So this will store the data, and um, vector use a first in, last out concept, which means that each time if you delete a variable, it will delete from the bottom itself. Okay, I hope this is clear. When we want to remove a data, we will use dot pop underscore back. And then you don't have to specify the value. The vector itself will remove the particular value in the vectors. And then it will reduce its size as well. For an example, values.popback, if you have typed this, then it will remove one of the value. Previously, we have 32, 21, and 10. So after you type dot .popback, it will remove 10. So the last value will be removed automatically, and it will know its size. You don't have to define its size. Okay. So basically, vector is good where the size can be extended can be um, reduced anytime. And in order to know the size of the vector, uh, we use the syntax dot size to represent it. Let's say if we want to display the, the size of variable values, just type values dot size, parentheses, semicolons, then um, the size of the, of the vector will be retrieved or show. So in order to display the content, is similar like array what you should do is we should have a for loop um, if you want to display everything from the particular vectors okay or else um, you can call one by one as well uh, using the c out individually if you know the positions or the index of the of the particular vectors okay otherwise um, usually we will use this for loop okay and in the for loop uh, for the rules for the rules part we will use the size the variable dot size and then it will know the compiler will know the vector size so we don't have to define it we don't have to know the size 
and then vector as parameters in functions. Okay, in some of the cases, we might want to call vectors into a function. Okay, this example shows us that we have a function, we return double, uh, and the variable is total. So the name of the function is sum, and a value, a value of that, oh, sorry, a, a vector is called or is named as values. The data type is double. So we pass this particular vector into the function sum. And over here, in this case, we define another variable called double, uh, sorry, called total, data type double as zero. We have a for loop to calculate the sum. We sum all of the values, sum all of the uh, values in the vector, and then we store it in the total, the variable total, and then we pass it back to the main program. So in this case, we can just simply call the vector itself, and then we apply and use it. We didn't update it, so we don't have to worry so much because, um, yeah, we just call it. We just call it like normally we call the variables, but then we don't update the variables. So, yeah, no changing of the vector value. So this is how we do it or how we use it. And we don't need to pass the size of a vector. In array, we have to also pass the variables, the size variable, so that the particular uh, functions, we know what is the size of the array and what is the array we want to pass, okay? But in vector, we don't need to pass the size. This is the second example. Uh, we have a function called multiply, okay? And then we pass a vector called vector double data type, uh, n percent values. So with n percent means that we are going to update the particular vector's value, okay? We we have a, another variable called factors, which is data type double. So in this case, we have a for loop. It will loop from the beginning of the index until its size, maximum size. So what we will do is, for every uh, vector values, start with index zero, start with index zero, we will multiply the factor. So if the factor is two, and the value first value maybe is one, so one multiply two and then store in the same variables. So we update the variables. So if we want to update the vector variables, then what should we do is we must pass the n% percent symbol in the declarations part, in the functions declarations part. Okay, but inside, we just call as usual, like we call array. Okay, we add the symbol n%. Percent. And in this case, can we return a vector? Um, yes. Okay, if um, let's say this function is given, we have a function vector, we return as integer, all right? And then uh, after we calculate everything, and then we can return the particular value in the vector itself. So this is an example of um, a, a, a function called squares, and then we pass an integer n inside, and then we declare a vector, so for its size, size of the vectors, uh, I'm not sure what is this n up to um, the users. If user pass four, then this will be four. So it will look, if this for loop will look four times. Every time it will multiply the i value. So start with zero, multiply zero, which is zero. So the first, first vector value is zero. And then the second value is one times one, which is one. Zero, one, four, and nine. Yeah, 0, 1, 4, and 9. So all of these value will be stored in the vector named results. And then we return this particular uh, vector to the main program. So in our main programs, uh, we can either call it or we can assign it to another vector. It's up to you how to program it. But it is possible. We can return a vector. Okay. As long as we have the, the, the returns result word and the vectors, and then we declare it properly. So as a conclusion, basically vector uh, as a parameter is much more easy compared to array and much more easy for us to call to remove the data and um, to arrange the data, okay? Because vectors can grow and sync. We don't have to care about the size of the particular um, vector because compiler will know it uh, using the function dot size. So it is easy for us to manage a collection of data and then we don't have to worry about the details. 
uh, how it is stored and then we do not worry about how many items are in the vector because we know the size right so sometimes in some of the cases anyway um, although vector is easy to use but some of the cases array will be required as well uh, because of compatibility okay most of the cases is because of compatibility and um, over here it says efficiency so i hope uh, this video will help you to understand about vectors so now we go for the coding part uh, as the slide said as, slide, as i said just now if we want to use vector we have to first include vector header file um so just type include vector and then when we want to declare a vector uh, we have to put vector in the front and then follow with the data type so i try to declare integer number uh, and then yep so i can do this okay so what will be happen if we just leave it blank the computer will know that um, how many numbers it will not it will, it will know about the size of the uh, variables okay it will sync automatically it will uh, grow automatically so we don't have to declare it basically we don't have to declare it but if you know the content of course you can declare it so in order to declare it let's say one two three four five okay let's say if we know the variable or else we just ignore the size okay ignore the content and ignore the size and this is how we declare it and when we want to insert data we will use pushback i try with num dot pushback okay and then the variables uh, any variables we try with integer and next uh, we try to insert more integers let's say okay so now we have five um, integers yeah save in the vector called num all right so the vector itself will grow and it will sync based on the um, the user's input or based on uh, how we set the data. Okay, and we can know the size by using the function called size. Right. So now, if I want to know what is the size of our vector, I can just simply see out this vector. With this, I will know the size of the vector. I can compile and run. Okay, it tells us that the size of the vector num is five. One, two, three, four, five. So what if what if I insert another code called popback? Popback, we don't need to insert any value, but don't forget about the parentheses. Okay um and then now the size should be reduced because we have pop back we try to compare and run compile and run it will tell you that now the vector size is four okay so how about the value itself how are we going to display the value uh, i try to hide the pop back first Okay, so there are two ways always. Um, one is we call the vector itself if we know its location or index. Okay, we try to call for the first one, for the third one, and for the fifth one. So zero, this is index zero index 2 index 4 0 to 4 so let's try compile and run so we have call index 0 which is 32 index 2 which is 111 index 4 which is 321 okay and the size of the vector is 5 and now if i resume for the pop back 
meaning that I remove one value. Um, let's say I remove here. So let's guess what is the output now. Definitely, it will not follow this. Okay, try to figure it out. And then we compile and run. What is the output? The size have been reduced now. Huh. Okay, just now you show an error. You, you have uh, saw an error from the compiler. Okay, so what is the error here is this is index 0, this is index 1, but then we pop back, meaning that this will be deleted, and then this is index 1, this become index 2, this become index 3. Okay, but in our code, we have one C out for vector with index 3. Ah, sorry, index 4 just now. So now if we change to index 3, compile and run, it should work. Alright. So index 0 is 32. Index 2 is 9, negative 9. Index 3 is 3 to 1. Okay, so this is the basic of um, pushback, uh, pop up, pop out, I uh, pop back, sorry, and how we call the variables. But in the actual in the actual exercise, we won't we won't insert like this. We will insert based on the user input, and then we will um, call them using a for loop and then display. Okay, let's say we want to collect um, some inputs from users. So what should we do is I use do do while loop. I create a code first. Okay, I have created a do while loop, see out, I request for an integer. If the integer 0, we detect that it is 0, means that we will stop the program. Then we will store the input to a variable called yes no. If the system detects that yes no value is not 0, any positive or any negative number, then we will store the particular variables in the vector. So this is how we assign the vari variable into a vector. And then the do while loop will check if it is not zero, then we will do it again. We will look again. Okay, let's try compile and run whether it works or not. You can just enter any value. Okay, so I have tried to enter these values, and when I enter zero, it should stop. Okay, uh, it will capture the size of the vector, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, excluded zero, five, four, excluded zero. Okay, and then it display one five nine because of this one. Num zero, num two, num three, but usually we will call. All of them if you want to call all of them um, yeah then we will use a for loop so just simply type a for loop okay now this part for this part we're going to use the size of the vector don't forget to change the vector index to i instead of to 0. So now with this, we will be able to display all of the variables in the vector from index 0 until its maximum size. We try um, to num1 to leave some space for every number. Okay, compile and run. All right, so it will show all of the variables. Nine, five, three, four, two, one, negative nine, four, negative six. Okay, so this is how we call them. Oh, we have n alt. Okay, so we don't need this because we already have the 
uh, end line. But it's fine. I just remove it. Okay, this is how we call for a for loop. Now let's try to pass the vector to the functions. And we have to first define a function after the using namespace. Um, we assume that this function has no has not um, update the vector value. So what are we going to do is we define void um, name of the function. Let's say we want to find the total or sum 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 of um, the value in a vectors. Okay, and then we um, display the see out. We see out the results. So what are we going to do? Okay, this is the basic code, and we are going to pass a vector in this function. So which vector? Which is this vector? Vector in num. We are going to pass it here. And again, we don't have to pass the size. We don't have to know the size. Okay, next. We are going to sum it. We are going to find the total for um, all of the variables inside. So we are going to use a for loop. And then Yeah, we are going to sum it total equal to total plus the vector value, but we don't we we didn't declare the total variable, so we have to declare it as integer, and don't forget we have to declare and initiate as a zero because we are going to use it to plus a number uh, a number integer plus an, uh, another integer, and then we are going to see out the results. Sum of variables, sum of vector. So we're going to display total. Okay, so in this case, we did not update, we did not update the vector values. We just use it. So we call it. So this is the function, a complete function we have. And in our main program, when we want to call it, just call the function name total. No, no, it's a sum. And then we are going to pass the a vector. The vector is num, so pass num. Okay, for this part, um, all right, I put one more line. Okay, now we try to compile and run. Enter any value. Zero to stop. Okay, it shows the size of the vector is five. One, two, three, four, five. Exclude zero, correct. And nine, six, three, eight, five. The sequence, correct. Sum of the vector is 31. So um, you have to calculate it using calculator. And then I'm sure the result is 31. Okay, this is one of the example we can pass a vector from the main function to a function and then we call the values and we um, use it okay so next part is we can also update the value of a vector but in order to update the value of a vector we have to include the n percent we must include the n percent or else we cannot update the value um, for an example I use the uh, I maintain this okay I create another function I rename it as um, update multiply right so in now I'm going to update and multiply uh, the vector values so I don't need this for each of the vector value what are we going to do is vector i value actually uh, okay we are going to multiply by two 
oh, sorry, it's not vector. Um, it's num. The vector name is num. So num equal to num multiply two. So what will be happen is each of the vector value now will be multiplied by two and then it will be updated. Okay, and then uh, we are going to display the value again. So after update, we are going to display the value. Okay, so we need two lines of code. We need um, this curly bracket. See out immediately, see out the vector value after update. And over here, I put uh, another see out message, which is updated by multiplier. All right, so let's compile and run. Insert any number. Stop with zero. Okay, now it shows size of the vector. Num is five, and then nine f seven. Sum of the value is thirty five. Okay, done. Done. Where update multiply is not available. Okay, because we didn't call it. We didn't call it. So from here we call it. And then we pass the variable. Uh, sorry, we pass the vector num. All right, now we try to compile and run. Put any value uh, values and zero to stop. If you found that sum of the vector is 26, updated multiplier is 18, 12, 16, and 6. Multiply by 2. Ah, yeah, correct. Multiply by 2. Sorry. Okay. So we can insert another C out here. Okay. You can rerun again. Size of the vector is 3, 9, 6, 3, sum is 18, and then updated by, by multiplier is 18, 12, and 6. Okay, but this is what happened after it is updated from here. After it is updated, we displayed it. But what about in the main program itself? Okay, we try to call again. vector values in main program okay we double check whether it is really updated it is actually updated or not okay we recall um, the vector in the main program so we compile and run again any value oops Okay, it will show that number of vector is 3, okay, 963, sum is 18, correct. Uh, multiply by 2, okay, correct. Vector values in the main program, it will show still 963. It is not updated. Okay, it is not updated. It happened just because when we pass the vector into the program, we didn't pass by parameter passing. So in order to solve this, it's very simple, put an n percent. In our functions, where we want to pass the vector and we want to update the vector, please put n percent. So this is totally similar with chapter five when we learned about how to pass a variable and then we want to update the content of the variables. We call it parameter passing and then we use n percent. Same, exactly same. So now we compile and run again. Just insert any values. Okay, seven four one times two, correct. And then the value now in the main program is 18, 8, and 2. It is updated just because of this symbol, n%. Percent. Right, now we try to um, apply an algorithm to sort the values inside the vector. 
where we want to use algorithms then we have to include a header file called algorithms okay and over here we can sort we can sort the uh, vector with this code sort right and then um the vector name dot begin and the vector name dot uh, n all right so over here what will be happen is um, the vector will be sought from the in, in an ascending order okay so we try to output again after sorting vector values after sorting and then next save it compile and run insert any value okay so size of the vector is 9 and this is the actual vector after we have updated with the multiplier this is the value and then after the vector sorted then now it sorted from ascending order so this is how we apply um, sorting algorithms to the vector so thank you for watching this video